and welcome to this lesson. Today we are going to be talking about self-pity versus self-compassion. So last video we went over what self-compassion is. So what is self-pity? Self-pity is wallowing in what's wrong with your life. Self-pity is making yourself a victim. Poor me, why did this happen to me? I don't understand, why is everybody out to get me? Self-pity is making you feel miserable. <laughs> Basically, self-pity is not good for you mentally, physically, emotionally. Self-pity can can wreak havoc on, your, on all areas of yourself, even your physical health. It can make you want to overeat or undereat or self-pity can do lots of damaging things to every part of you and it's not good at all. Now, we all have our moments of self-pity even the strongest people do, but it's not letting ourselves stay in those moments. It's letting go because that's what self-compassion is. It's surrendering. Surrendering and accepting what is. Just knowing that, yes, this went horribly, but I have to accept it and I have to move on. That's what self-compassion is. That's what truly um, loving yourself is. Just accepting what's happening to you and moving on and knowing that you're still the same person and that you still love yourself. Um, if you believe that life is hard, then life is going to be hard. We are what we tell ourselves. So if we're constantly saying negative things to ourselves and pitying ourselves, that's how we're going to feel and that's how we're going to see the world. But when we're constantly giving ourselves encouragement and hope and love and kindness, then that's how we're gonna see the world. So what you tell yourself is what you believe. You choose your thoughts and it's okay to have feelings. It's okay to feel bad about yourself. I'm not saying you can't have those feelings. I'm not saying you can't be wallowing in self-pity, but just don't stay there. Don't sink into those feelings and don't stay there. It's okay to feel sad, mad, angry about a situation, but let yourself feel that. You are allowed to feel that. Let yourself feel that and then think of ways that you can overcome this. Think of ways that you can accept this and move on with your life. The thing about self-pity is it wants to drag you down and it wants you to stay in that hole that you've created for yourself. But we need to surrender and know that we did our best and that we still love ourselves and who we are and try to move on from those feelings. Don't stay in that self-pity hole. So self-compassion is focusing on the solution and not the problem. Self-pity wants you to focus on the problem and stay there <laughs> and feel bad about it. But self-compassion thinks, what can we do to get over this? How can we solve this? It wants you to focus on the solution so you can move on. And that's what self-compassion is. And we don't want to stay in self-pity. We want to get out of that hole. And self-compassion doesn't judge you. Self-pity wants to judge you. It wants to tell you that you're horrible or you did a horrible job. It wants to pass judgment on you. But self-compassion lets you no judgment. It lets you know that you did what you needed to do and let's move on. Let's fix this and move on. So don't stay in that self-pity hole. Allow yourself to feel those feelings we are allowed to feel those feelings. We are allowed to have bad days. We are allowed to have days where we stay in bed all day and cry. We are allowed to do that, but don't stay there forever. Give yourself that time to feel, give yourself that time to wallow, and then climb out of that self-pity hole to compassion, to surrendering, to finding the solution.